all right folks what is up hope you're having a fantastic friday today it's just gonna be a quick five ten minute video on the nikes theory i got a little collab for you we're just gonna talk about how many times you should sample to get some good audio all right so first things first it is in the collab the code here it's going to be in the util section um probably could be somewhere else but it is in the util section and it is actually a standalone down here nyquist frequency it's a quick background supposedly originally published by et whitaker in 1915 proven by claudia shannon the sampling theorem and implied by some work by harry nikist in 1928 so what is this theorem? The fundamental sampling theorem, the Nikes Shannon theorem, whatever you want to call it, claims that if a system uniformly samples an analog signal at a rate that exceeds the signal's highest frequency by at least a factor of two, the original analog signal can be perfectly recovered from the discrete values produced by sampling. Let's take a look at some code and see if we can make sense of this. <clears throat> so again, this is in the GitHub. It's called Nikes underscore example. There's also one called NISC frequency example both of them kind of build off of each other all right so the motivation for this is i was you know researching nike's theorem again just to make sure that i had my fundamentals right uh for another collab which i will do uh for audio sampling and i came across this statement here that says now imagine the sensor took a measurement every 12 hours of the sensors measuring the earth the results would show one period of light followed by a period of darkness this would accurately describe our 24 hour day night cycle on earth and i propose that this highlights the kind of thinking that i see when people are trying to do samples of stuff to get something reproducible there's two things here that are incorrect first of all it does not specify the day night cycle of the day so we're assuming that it's a 12 hour day night cycle which on average is pretty dang close but it's not exact it could be 6 a.m it could be 6 p.m and you could have daylight both times a large portion of the world there is at least one day in the year where there is light at 6 a.m and there is light at 6 p.m and then also just because you've collected these samples and you can assuming that it is a 12 hour day night cycle and you can in theory reproduce the day night cycle of the earth with these samples taken every 12 hours it's not just from the points alone you're gonna have to do some crazy mathematics and you know get some curves going you're gonna have to form the equation and uh that is not really clearly explained in this and i think a lot of people miss that so let's look at the code and see what we can come up with all right so here's the code to show how it can be difficult to recreate an identical representation of something with only sample. We're plotting the day and night cycle of the Earth given an arbitrary frequency of day or frequency of night, and this is going to represent the amount of days per hour and the amount of nights per hour. So there's going to be one day per 14 hours and one night per 10 hours in this example. And since we're graphing these concurrently, we don't have to, this 10 should really be the event minus the frequency day and event's gonna be the day. But since the way that this is plotting, this this works out fine. Um, so you can see here that it's not a continuous frequency over the time period that we're looking at. So simply taking the highest frequency being one over 10 is not gonna necessarily give us exactly what we're looking for. And we can see that here. So in this Nyquist example or Nyquist example or Nyquisty or whatever you wanna call it, we're setting the frequency day to one over 14. And this terminology is weird because it's 14 hours and there's so one, so it's the, it just works out, trust me. And then this frequency night is one over 10. The total hours is 96. We're looking, we're, that's just how long we're looking, how big the graph is gonna be. And the number of cycles is four. We have a sample rate of five. Now the sample rate is how many samples to take per uh, section here. So this is gonna be per hour. So it's a little bit different than the frequency. It's a little confusing, but the sample rate is five hours per sample. I'm sorry. So there's gonna be one sample every five hours. It's exactly what this is. It's the same thing. That's why, uh, but it, but I, I I took the uh, actual va not the rate. It's not a frequency anymore. It's a it's five. That's what we have here. The reciprocal of it's not really a frequency and it's not really a rate here. These, these are my own custom units. If you don't like it, uh, you're free to change it. It's on GitHub. So and we can double this uh, sample rate and doubling the sample rate in, is actually having the value because again these the, the words here and the num numerical values aren't necessarily in line with what you might have been taught elsewhere. But we double the we double the rate here. We we take twice as many points per 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 you know per whatever we were doing before, 
And you can see here that it's a little bit better. It's, you can kind of get it. Here's pretty good. Here's where I think we could stop. We could we could get some curvature here, uh, knowing that the amplitude is consistently at one. We could do some math here, and I think we could very safely recreate this uh, with a little bit of mathematics. Uh, and of course, we're not actually recreating the signal. Uh, when you put, put this through, it's going to do something else. It's going to add noise. And I'm sure with this, we can add the proper amount of noise to fill this in. So uh, if we were to generate a curve, it would look something similar to that. But you can see two times the frequency rate is, is not always enough. And certainly not enough if all you're doing is taking the sample points and trying to recreate the signal from there. And we can go one more four times the sample rate or divide it by four. And you can see now we're looking pretty good. And I think in general, what I've found is four times the frequency rate with just taking the points is the best. Uh, I get pretty good results from that. So, uh, you know, that's completely uh, anecdotal. Uh, I've got no theory behind it, but <laughs> we can, you know, but it does seem to work pretty well. All right, that was just super quick, neekest little thing here with some code that we will be using in the future. And when I say we, I mean me. If you got any questions, please put them in the comments. If you debates, please debate me all the time. I'm always down to, you know, hash it out. If you don't like me, make sure you let me know. You know, we can talk about it uh, and email me, of course. I would prefer a comment, but emails are fine. We got more software reverse engineering, mostly installs, just want to get the basics done. We got some open AI stuff. We have, there should be on the GitHub now, there's updated code for all of that. So you check it out, it should be there. Uh, if it's not, I'll push it now. And there's always going to be object detection stuff coming. That's also on the GitHub. GitHub might get updated more than the videos. Not always though. I haven't updated the GitHub or the videos in the past two weeks. So I do apologize about that. Uh, but there is always code. So go through the GitHub, get that code, get you some knowledge, get you some love. I need some love. Uh, if anyone's got something they want to give it to me, I'd appreciate it. Peace.